<laughs> Tony, I'm so sorry. Take it away. That's, that's okay. Listen, I don't know about World Book Day. That would be the kids' nightmares. <laughs> <don't you think? laughs> and anyway, Jen, so there's a couple of things, a couple of points I wanted to make. And I have to apologise because of the way I'm listening. Um, I may be a couple of like, calls behind. So if I'm repeating anything, my apologies. Oh, you're fine. And, I know you were talking about John Lundstrom and he was you were going to be doing an interview and I haven't heard that yet. But oh, here we up. go, right. I'll put you out of your misery very quickly since you asked. One game. It was it was a one game. We, we didn't turn up, they turned up. I think the combination, as I've just said, for that didn't didn't complement each other well. We didn't turn up, they turned up, so it, it looks like there was a massive gap. But, but I don't think there is a massive gap. It's, it's, it's a one game and it looked like that on the weekend. But... What do you think, Tony? Nonsense, absolute nonsense. So the first point I want to make in relation to that is Celtic hardly got out of second gear on Sunday. Celtic done what they needed to do and were so comfortable. Now, I know, obviously, we conceded a goal to make it 2-1. And it doesn't matter who you're playing when you're only one goal up and it's a cup final and, of course, it is against your rivals, then it is going to be nervy. Um, but really, let's be honest... Celtic didn't look like conceding a second goal and for me they didn't look in trouble at any point and I think that that could have been hammered home at the end but for a couple of poor finishes and it could really have been um, 3 or, or 4-1 so I do think that Celtic are, are streets ahead at the moment and that kind of takes me on to my next point and it's, it's a question um, mainly for Gordon but it's just something I've picked up, picked up on that's been said a lot recently Apparently, you know, one of the reasons we are so far ahead is because Ange Postecoglou is 18 months ahead of, of Michael Beale. Now, I've, I've been watching and listening to shows like this and watching football for 40-odd years. I've never in my life heard this, this statement or this comparison before. Where, where did this come into things? It's almost... I know that we are getting credit for the football we're playing. I know that everyone knows that we are rightly where we should be, and there's no question about that. But when did this become a thing that, well, we're so far ahead because Ange Postecoglou's had 18 months longer than my, Michael Beale? I just... I, I just... I've never heard that before. I don't see how that, how that has any relevance, especially when you look at 12 months ago when Rangers were in the European final. Um, you know, in the year before that, they'd won the league, and... So, you know, I just think that, that that's just utter nonsense. And I have to say, Gordon, you're saying it more than anyone. But what do you mean nonsense? Because I, I don't really know what you mean. It is a fact, though, isn't it, as well? Like, what do you mean it's nonsense? But, but, but when has that ever... In, in football, when has that ever been um, mm. a, a narrative that's been used? I never, ever heard anyone saying... But, it do, Tony, it does sound like you're quite sort of unaware that, it's, that it is just that compliment to Celtic when people mention it in the context right you sound very angry about it or, or very offended that, that it has been brought up for the first time in football history apparently but it's just people saying that when you watch Celtic you can see that they've had this 18 months they're so well drilled they, they know what they're doing you can see it there and Rangers aren't there yet we, we don't know if they ever do get there maybe they don't but is that, is that not all it is I don't, I don't know how you've managed to find something sinister in there it's not so much sinister, but it's just almost like an excuse that's being used. Well, no wonder they're so far ahead because they've had this time longer. Can I, can I ask you, and it is a serious question, do any of you guys, have you ever heard any other managers have that comparison made? You know, that, oh, well, no wonder Guardiola is so far ahead because he's had so much longer in that job than, you know, the Man United manager or whatever the case may be. I just, I genuinely mm. think it's just something, I've honestly, genuinely, it's something that I've never, ever heard it's, used. It, but I think my reason for not being able to give Tony an example would be because it's just not that deep. You know, it's, it's just like... It just seems like it's a kind of obvious throwaway comment that I, I don't think requires huge analysis. But Tony, Tony may disagree. Yeah, I think nowadays um, a manager will be judged by his transfer windows, Gordon. You know, and obviously, I think what we're trying to say is, Poster Coglu has come in. His transfer windows have been superb, right? Um, Michael Beale's come into a situation where, and Rangers fans are on tonight. Um, 
telling us that it's more than four players and how many have to go and it's a rebuilding and, you know, complimenting Celtic in a way saying, you know, the gap's so big that we have to do so much work in the summer. I think it's... I, I, I wouldn't get too caught up about it. I, I don't think it's a criticism. I think it's more a compliment Definitely to the Celtic. Definitely not a criticism yeah, it's in a, any way, think, shape or form. I think it's a, a, a good compliment to the job that the Celtic manager's doing. And you did, to be fair, regularly on this show say, you know, Ange Postacoglu needs windows, he needs time to get the, the team in his form. Whether you mentioned a specific number of months, I, I, I couldn't be sure. But Yeah, but when, when he came in, Ange Postacoglu basically came into a mess as well. Probably a bigger mess than what Michael Beale came into. And he certainly, and remember at that time, there was a lot, a lot of doubters out there because nobody had heard of him. He didn't bring in his own staff. So there was concerns from the Celtic supporters. And that's the reason when I was saying, right, OK, before you start judging people, you've got to give them an opportunity to get into the transfer windows, bring in their own players, see what style of football they're bringing, see what they're bringing to the table. And you've got to say, Ange Postacoglu has ticked every box and been brilliant. Yeah, I mean, you've got to remember in this country... It's two teams that can win the league, let's be honest about it. So when a new manager comes into any of those roles, they're always going to get compared to the other manager and how the other manager has got their side playing to be successful. Because if it's a new manager, it's, it's generally because the other one's been sacked because they're not achieving. So I think it is natural, whether we hear it a lot... I would, I would argue that you do hear it a lot down south where, where Ten Hag it's just came to Man United and building something he gets compared to Guardiola and Klopp a lot Graham Potter at Chelsea so I think it is something but here it's so focused on Rangers and Celtic that it's it's more prominent mm, Thank you very much to Tony and Blackpool it's that time already in fact